bookworms. Today I'm going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. I filmed this video last year and then I never posted it and I definitely did do it the year beforehand. So this year I was like, I'm I'm posting it and I promise that this is going up. I really like this tag because I think it's a really good way to check in on your progress so far within the year and then figure out kind of a little bit of a plan for the rest of the year. I read a lot of books so it's really difficult for me to pick only one answer for every question so I tend to have like one to five answers per question, but I'm gonna go through everything kind of quickly just so that it doesn't like drag on forever. But the original creators of this tag were Chami and Ellie, and from what I can tell, neither of them actually have their videos up anymore, so there's really nothing to link to. But yeah, I'm going to get into the questions. So the first one is the best book that you've read so far in 2019, and for this one I'm gonna tell you the best four books that I've read so far in 2019. <laughs> so first is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I loved this book so much. It really reminded me of Almost Famous. It was perfect in my mind and I've reread the ending a whole bunch of times since I finished the book just because I loved it so much and it made me cry and it was just beautiful. Perfection. Another one of the top books that I've read is definitely Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This is a royal romance and it takes place between the first son of the President of the United States who is a woman and Prince Henry from Great Britain. Oh my goodness, it is just hard heartwarming. The relationship between them is amazing. I think that Casey McQuiston perfectly captured the way that people actually talk to each other and I loved Alex's stream of consciousness. He was such a great character and I also loved his sister and his best friend and it was just all around amazing. Another book that was just like perfection, left me feeling so happy. I cannot recommend this one enough. It was just incredible. Number three would be An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. I did not know that I was going to love this book as much as I did, but I was a addicted to it. Like the second that the story started, I was so invested. I really loved the narrator, April May. She was definitely very flawed and she made a ton of really bad decisions, which she also acknowledged that she made bad decisions. But listening to her narrate it was very compelling and I loved the YouTube aspect of it. I loved the sci-fi aspect of it. It just was all around a really enthralling read and I can't wait for whatever Hank is going to write next. And then the last one that I'm going to shout out is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I just love this book so much. I thought it was so beautifully written. You can't go wrong with a magical library. It follows a girl named Elizabeth who was an orphan and she grew up in a magical library. She has to team up with a sorcerer who she's been told her whole life that sorcerers are evil, so she kind of has to re-examine her feelings there when the two of them are trying to find out what evil is actually happening. And yeah, it's so good, and I really liked the Faustian bargain that sorcerers have with demons. That's how they get their power. Nathaniel's demon Silas was just my favorite character. I really loved this one. There were parts in it when I cried and it was just so good, but it was just very like old school fantasy and just beautiful. Question two is the best sequel you've read so far in 2019. And for this one, I only have one answer and that is The Penderwicks at Gardam Street by Jean Birdsall. Besides this, I really haven't read too many sequels this year that I think are very notable. I have read a few, but nothing that I'm like, this is the best. But this one I really enjoyed. This series just makes me feel like so happy. It's about four sisters and they lost their mother and the oldest sister kind of like fills in as the like responsible one. But each of the sisters has such a strong personality and it's so fun to see all of them interact and they all just are into such different things. I particularly really love Jane who is the sister that is into writing and she's always like daydreaming and it's just so so well written and so like wholesome and enjoyable and I just love this series. Number three is new release you haven't read yet but want to and I'm gonna show you three for this one. So first is The Bride Test by Helen Huang. This is the companion novel to The Kiss Potion which I read last year and I really enjoyed. Another one that I have not yet read at the time of filming but I hope to have read by the time this video goes up on my channel is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. I've honestly just been so into 
like romance and contemporary lately and I don't know why I haven't gotten to this one yet. I've loved all of the Christina Lauren books that I've read so far so I definitely want to continue reading everything that they put out. And the third book I want to mention is We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. This is a young adult fantasy book that just came out in, I want to say came out in May, and it's a fantasy that was inspired by ancient Arabia, and it sounds like it's going to be really good. I know a couple of people who have read it so far, and they've all said that it was a really unique fantasy. I'm all about that, so yeah. Definitely need to read this one before the end of the year. Number four is your most anticipated release for the second half of 2019, and for this one I'm gonna go with five books, <laughs> one of which I am lucky enough to already have in my possession, and that is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. It's over there on my TBR cart at the moment in the first spot because I'm planning on reading that really soon. I actually want to read it in July because that's my birthday month and I, I just love Erin Morgenstern and I love The Night Circus. I actually read The Night Circus in one day on a Christmas, like in one sitting and it's very memorable. So I wanna read this one during my birthday month. Number two is obviously The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. Me and some of my really good friends, Alexa, Jane, and Melanie are all hosting fairy a -thon, So we're reading one book a month and that's leading up to the release of The Queen of Nothing and I'm just dying. So like the anticipation is so real for this one. I've just been like building for it for so long. Number three, three would be Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater. I love the Raven Boys with my whole heart and I cannot wait for the Ronin trilogy. I'm honestly just so, so excited about it. So that is another one that I've been really highly anticipating. Number four is The Toll by Neil Shusterman. This one comes out in November and this is the conclusion to the Arc of the Scythe trilogy. I just think that these books are so uniquely written and I'm normally not into dystopian, but these ones just totally got me and I'm obsessed with them and they really make you think and I love all of the philosophy that goes into it. And the second one ended with a huge cliffhanger. So I've been pretty much dying to get the last book ever since I read The End of Thunderhead. And number five would be Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell. I love Carry On. I thought that was such a great book. I really want to reread it. So I'm planning on doing that before Wayward Son comes out. And I can't wait to do so. I can't wait to have more Simon and Baz. I think it's going to be amazing. Number five is your biggest disappointment. So for this I have two answers and they're two different types of disappointment. So the first one is Famous in a Small Town by Emma Mills and this one was really disappointing because I love Emma Mills and I've loved all of her books that I've read so far so I had really high expectations for this book and while I did really enjoy it for the majority of the book I started disliking it about like three-fourths of the way through because I felt like there were things that were just thrown in as an afterthought that didn't really add to the plot of the book. It was really upsetting because I was loving it so much in the beginning and then the ending just kind of like ruined it and also just because I loved Emma so much so I was just expecting so much from this book. And then the second one I actually already unhauled and that is Fame, Fate, and the First Kiss by Casey West and the reason that this one was disappointing is again I've loved so many of Casey West's books. Some of them can be a little bit hit or miss but this one was just like a major miss for me like I just did not ever click with it. I've never like disliked a Casey West book so much like I get, think I gave it two stars which is like really low and yeah I just it just was not for me and it was about a girl who was working on set of a zombie movie so I thought that was like gonna be the perfect thing to get me interested in it and it just didn't do it. Number six is The Biggest Surprise and for that I'm going with Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. I thought that I was gonna enjoy this book and it would be somewhere in the 3.5 to 4 star range but this ended up being a five star read for me. It was so good. The world building was just absolutely incredible. It's an adult fantasy. It was really funny which I did not think was gonna happen and it follows a girl named Sancha and she has been tasked with stealing this magic artifact and once she obtains it pretty much all of the mob families that own this city in the world that she lives in are after her and she's kind of fighting to stay alive and to figure out what is going on and it was just so good and I honestly cannot wait to read the next one. The next question is favorite new author whether it is a debut or a new to you author so for this I have two answers but three authors and the first one is 
Elle Kennedy. I finally read The Deal by Elle Kennedy and I loved it so much and I can't wait to read so many of her other books. I know that she has quite a few that are already out, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to finishing the off-campus series and then diving into the Briar University series, which, which is like the next one but takes place at the same college. This is a new adult sports romance and I just ended up enjoying it like so much more than I was expecting to. And then my other answer is Emily Wiberly and Austin Sigmund Broca and they're actually a couple who wrote this book, Always Never Yours, and If I'm Being Honest, and I read both of them this year and I loved both of them so much. They're definitely like my new favorite young adult contemporary authors. Like I hope that they keep coming out with at least one contemporary a year because I need more. They write the best heroines ever and I'm just yeah, like totally in love with their writing. So many of my books are so far away and I am lazy. <laughs> the next question is newest fictional crush. So for this one, I have three answers. The first one being Max from The Start of Me and You. The second one being Alex Claremont Diaz from Red, White, and Royal Blue. And the third one being Owen from Always Never Yours. Number nine is newest favorite character. So one of my newest favorite characters is Cameron from If I'm Being Honest, which is the other book I mentioned that Emily and Austin co-wrote. I also really love Camilla from Daisy Jones and the Six, although Daisy and Billy are also phenomenal characters, but I just felt like Camilla was the standout in my opinion. Again, Alex Claremont Diaz from Red, White, and Royal Blue. He's just so great. And finally, April May from An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. Number 10 is a book that made you cry, and I've cried a lot this year from books. I feel like every year that I get older, I like turn into more of an emotional crying mess when I'm reading. So I've read I've cried in a lot more books than I will mention right now, but these ones are the ones that made me cry the most. So the first one is The Paris Seamstress by Natasha Leister. This was such a beautiful historical fiction novel and it half took place in New York and half took place in Paris and it was so good and it actually had some real people from history within it so it led me down a whole bunch of Wikipedia rabbit holes. I also cried quite a bit in The Simple Wilds by K.A. Tucker. This one is another one that I just really loved so much but it took place in Alaska and it follows a girl whose dad is sick and it's her like really getting to know him for the first time ever and it was just so touching and really had me in tears. I also cried a ton in Next Year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. This one I cried a lot just because it was really difficult to read and really difficult to hear about the things that are still happening in Cuba and it was very touching. I thought the story was really well done. I think historical fiction like really gets to me a lot. There's always some kind of tragic plot line that goes along in historical fiction and yeah this one got me. <laughs> and then finally Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid which there's really nothing else to say. Like I've talked about this book a lot already in this video but so good and definitely had me in tears. Number 11 is a book that made you happy and for this one I'm definitely gonna say 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. This is Ashley's first contemporary novel and it was so good. It had me laughing out loud a ton because some of the blind dates that this character went on were just so ridiculous and like I just couldn't even believe like being in that situation but I felt like she did a great job of narrating what was going on and having the, the main character have kind of an appropriate uh, response to it and I just loved what a big part family played in this novel. Also Red, White, and Royal Blue because obviously. And it's really far away but Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. That also made me really happy just because it was like a Magnus and Alec travel novel and it was really fun. It was just like a good adventure and it was a really nice look at their relationship in the early days and yeah definitely made me smile. Next is the most beautiful book you bought or received this year. So I have two for this one. The first one being The Water Stones exclusive edition of The Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu, which I just mentioned and didn't hold up when I was talking about, but realized it was also the answer for this question, so I made myself get up. I just love the rune editions, and I really wish that Waterstones would come out with all of the books in this type of beautiful style. And then my other answer is one that I just got in the mail literally yesterday. It hasn't even been in a book haul yet. This super gorgeous Anne of Green Gables. It is a reprint of the first edition of Anne of Green Gables that was ever done. Not only that, this is the first time that Anne of Green Gables has ever actually been published on Prince Edward Island, which is where the story takes place. So I was just like, what? <laughs> like, that's amazing. And it's this beautiful mint green color. I just love it so much. I think it's gorgeous. 
gorgeous. <laughs> and finally, what books do you need to read before the end of the year? And I would say that my top three are Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames, Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray, and some of my friends are actually hosting a Diviner's Read Along later on in the summer. I want to say it's starting in like August or September, leading up to the release of King of Crows, which is the final book in the series. So I'm definitely going to be partaking in that and I will be reading this when they're reading this one. And finally, The Devil's Thief by Lisa Maxwell. I really enjoyed The Last Magician. I really need to read the sequel. The third book got pushed back, so I didn't feel as though I needed to read it as soon, but I do really want to revisit this world and revisit these characters. So those are all my answers to the mid-year book freakout tag. I really like this tag and I really need to make a point to do it every single year. So I hope that you enjoyed all of my answers. Let me know what your answers to the questions are, or you can leave a link to your own video if you have filmed one, because I would love to watch it. I, like I said, I love this tag. I think it's just such a great tag. And yeah, that's all that I have for this video. So I will see you guys soon in a new one. Bye!